here. Welcome to the virtual virtual reading fair. My name is Harry Chia, and I am six years old, and I am going to the first grade. Thank you, Harry. I'm uh, here to be uh, I've been in, been on 11 days of uh, reading, and I think we get eight more, seven, seven more, seven more. Good morning, I am Dr. Janice Neal Vincent, a retired university professor and author. Happy to be part of this series. Yes, I am Big Trey. Pardon me? Trey? Oh, my name is Trey and I'm, and I'm six years old and I'm going to the first grade at uh, Tinder Rangers. And I'm the trailer. I'm his Gigi. <laughs> and Lynette I'm Stafford. Jenkins. Okay, and I'm Vicky Jenkins. Okay, and so Trey, I understand that you're gonna do the honors and read first, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell us what you're gonna read and hold your book up so we can see you. And I'm gonna um, we can mute ourselves right. <laughs> Today, I'm going to read part two of The King of Kindergarten. Your teacher will come, will, wel will welcome you with a warm smile and a friendly good morning. She'll be delighted mm -hmm. by how you recite. recite your name with pride. Sorry, when when you head to your royal seat, the kid at your round table will have mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. will hey. wave and say hi, like their babe they've been wanting mm -hmm. waiting uh, waiting on your you all summer to mm -hmm. so so you smile back for a return. turn return the wave and give them to a cheerful hi everybody the truth truth is you couldn't want wait to wait to meet your kindergarten kingdom each. Your teacher will go over classrooms room rules. rules and you'll be all discuss discuss important matter mm -hmm. matters mm -hmm. matters 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 such as shapes and alphabets and the never ever ending mystery of numbers She'll, she'll even read a book about trucks, trains, and tractors. Okay, he'll finish up in the afternoon session. No, I'm not finished. You're going to finish in the afternoon session. You're going to finish reading at the afternoon session because other people have to read.
Oh, uh, very good, Trey. Uh, Trey, I wanted to tell you that when you was reading about kindergarten, I actually was thinking back. I think um, when I was in kindergarten, my mother was in, uh, working on a master's degree in Champaign, Illinois. And we lived, um, this was the late 60s, in a apartment building. For some reason, black and whites lived there. And, and my little friend who went to kindergarten with me was a little white boy. And the thing that I will never forget about being in kindergarten was we had, it was about 30 plants in the window. Our kindergarten teachers let us plant something from a seed. And I was just so amazed. I would go to the window and just look at my part. <laughs> oh, every day. And when it's when it came up, I just felt so much attachment to that um, uh, plan. But that's one of the biggest things I can remember from uh, kindergarten. So I really enjoyed your uh, kindergarten uh, story. And uh, I'm, I was going to read next, and then I was going to let uh, Harry. Then I was going to let uh, Harry uh, read. Well, I see that you still have a chance, Mr. Plants. What'd you say now? I said you still have a chance, Mr. Plants. Yes, yes. Uh huh. And I wouldn't even think about that until you read about kindergarten and the story came to my mind. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to. So, Trey, I, I want you to tell me one or two. I'm going to read about a governor. And I want you to tell me one or two things that you learn, I'm gonna make sure that you're listening about this governor, okay? It's, this is our Mississippi hey, history, okay? I think I know of him last time. No, no, no she hadn't read yet. Just wait till she finished just more than one person. Okay, and I'm, I'm continuing to read from um, the sheet of, this is the Mississippi State Capitol. And Trey, you see that picture? That is the, the Mississippi State Capitol and down a town, Jackson, where all of the laws for the state of Mississippi are made. And the governor signs them into law or he can veto them. Harry, Harry, yes, yes. I'm reading about a governor in the state of Mississippi where, where you live, and I'm going to make sure that you're listening. I'm going to ask you to tell me one thing that you learned about this governor that I'm going to be reading about, okay? You and Trey. So, and I made it to chapter two. Uh, and the, and the name of it is Four Governors, 1900 to 1916. What's the years? Did y'all hear the years of the governor? Mm -hmm. what, what's the year? Now, it's all. Uh, you see it? It's now 1916. Uh-huh. 1900 to 1916. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see how you all are listening because since everybody's reading, we want everybody to read, listen to everybody uh, read so you can uh, have excellent, be engaged and ask the questions of everybody because everybody's learning. Okay, so chapter two. Four governors, 1900-1916. Mama is a history buff. Remember, Nishida's mother it teaches history. She's a history professor at Tougaloo College. Yesterday, we read Mississippi history. Now, essays about four men who were governors of Mississippi from 1900 to 1916. 
Andrew Longino was the first of the four governors we read about. Andrew Longino. He is important to the history of the state of Mississippi because he offered the uh, construction of the Mississippi State Capitol. Authorized, I'm sorry. The Mississippi Senate and the House of Representatives approved the bill to build the new capital. Governor Longino sat at his desk and signed the bill into law. Now, let me ask you something. When I said he sat at his desk and signed the bill into law, what do you think that means? What you what you think that means, sir? What, uh, Harry, do you know what you think that means? The governor sat at his desk and signed the bill into law. What you think that means? Um, he sat at his table and inside of a building. That's correct. And he signed means he signed his name in cursive. You all have to learn how to write a curse. I think it was some of the second grade. But he signed his signature on the bill authorizing money to be used to build this building. So the governor is, is a, uh, he says the authorizes, uh, the allows an ex of that um, lawmakers uh, right. A bill is an idea for a room. Construction started in 1901 and ended in 1903. It took 28 months to build the new capital. It was built on the old site of the state penitentiary. The penitentiary was torn down and the new building was constructed. See this building? They started building it in 1901, and it took them 28 months to build it. And I didn't know that until the sheet had told me that that used to be the site of the state penitentiary. I, I never learned that in school. <laughs> okay. Um, the first state capital was built in 1839 on State Street. It was 61 years old when the workers started construction on the new building. Lawmakers called the first state capital the Old Capitol. Today it is called the Old Capitol Museum because it is a museum. People from around the world visit it. Governor Longino graduated from Mississippi College in Clinton. He was the first governor of the state of Mississippi to get a degree from a college in the state of Mississippi. Mississippi College was created in 1826. It was the state's first college. The idea to create a tour bear was inspired by an event that happened over 100 years ago during Governor Longino's term in office. At that time, President Theodore Roosevelt came to our state and went bear hunting in the Mississippi Delta. He was the 26th president of the United States of America. President Roosevelt's nickname was Teddy. Y'all see this picture? That's a picture of uh, President Theodore Roosevelt, and he was the 26th president of the United States of America, bear hunting in Mississippi. And this picture was drawn by somebody named Clifford Kennedy Berryman in uh, 1902. It's a, uh, like a cartoon. An African-American man named Holt Collier was the president's tour guide. While they were traveling through the woods, the president came upon the bear. It was tied down, so he was a cartoon artist drew a picture of the president to shoot the bear. 
owner of a toy company in Brooklyn, New York, saw the picture, made a toy bear, and named it Teddy Bear in honor of President Roosevelt. And I, I got one more paragraph to, to look at that. He, uh, someone in a New York saw this uh, cartoon in the newspaper and drew and, and made a teddy bear. And people all over the world have been buying teddy bears ever since. I know it's family going to be rich forevermore. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, Illinois Central Railroad owed Mississippi $1 million in bank taxes. They did not want to pay their bank tax. Therefore, the state of Mississippi sued the railroad company. The court ordered them to pay their taxes. The money from the court settlement was used to build the state capital. And here's a picture of uh, Governor Andrew Lundinoff. Courtesy of the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. Okay, it cost the state of Mississippi one million and ninety-three thousand six hundred forty-one dollars to build the new capital. A million dollars has seven numbers. That is a lot of money. So the the, the state of Mississippi um, used the money from the law settlement to build this beautiful state building for our law lawmakers. To right here. Like what it is like what right here. Okay, so Trey, tell me one thing you learned about the first part of this chapter for Mississippi government. Uh, can I say thing, two things? No, you asked him a question first. No, he uh, he was used to so No, it's not. I was asking him to tell me that. Uh, before I started reading, I asked them to tell me something that they uh, that they learned about my reading to make sure they're listening. And he just told me he wanted to say two things that he learned us to the world. That's fine. Tell me what you no, know. They <laughs> huh? No, they No, I that we have to buy money to order fixed places. Because I remember. Uh uh Safe to stick to what you're saying. You have to buy money. You have to get money to fix places. Uh -huh. I get money from buying some there a job. Okay, and something else did you what else did you learn? And I also learned that how can they just build the building with just gold and money? Mm -hmm. how, can they, how can they build a uh a, a building with with money? They use the money to pay for the materials and the labor. Also, uh, like you can use like timber, straw, bricks, like little pigs or something. Okay. <laughs> or straw. Okay, so he was his, his comments were about you need money to build things, and he wanted to know how you how do you build things with money. And I told him you, you pay to use the money to pay for the labor and to pay for the material. So he likened that to the story with the three little pigs. <laughs> you know, okay, use, they use bricks. Use bricks, timber, straw, uh, bricks, wood, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Meredith. Uh -huh. When he saw the book cover, he said, We had that book. That's right here. I went and got it. Oh, so as soon as he saw the cover, he said, Gigi. He said, Gigi, we had that book. So that's when I got up and I went to get it. And a uh, whole collier is buried in. Yeah. I know one of his uh, nieces. Really? Where is he buried at? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you come to visit again, I'll take you. Uh, okay. So you may tell me he's buried in Greenville? Yes, ma'am. And I said, I know one of his nieces. Okay. Yeah, I got to, I, I would love to. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yes, ma'am. Okay, then, so uh, 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 anybody else can volunteer to read uh, next?
Well, okay. Sweet aroma of seasoning, spices, and herbs and spaghetti sauce filled the air. Soon I reached the top of the stairs that day must fight in the Mitchell us. Day, pasta, the night in the Mitchell household. Planning out meals is a habit of my mom's. Keeping down the expenses and the stress level by climbing the, the eliminating the cost questioning. What is to be the menu every night? The only downfall from the planned meals is that there's a guarantee that I will have to eat at least 52 times a year beans. On Wednesday is the dreadful day, and I hate beans, pinto beans, black-eyed peas, kidney beans. It doesn't matter. All beans suck. But living with my mom, like mine, is either take it or leave it. Most of it, take it, but get your own. Thursday makeup, first of all, for the when, when I come to pick up, pick out whatever I want to eat. If I cook, Thursday is the only time my mother vacation days from cooking because she swears cooking is a job all in itself. Planning meals was something her mother and my grandmother did faithfully. They instilled in her that the planning day will go smoother than just going with it by flow, going through it with flow, going with flow often leaving some wiggle room to manage when unexpected crisis thus is often heard in the Mitchell household, especially when a natural born procrastinator put out mostly any task given to me. This is the reason why I hurriedly clumped down the stairs, trying to go and beat the third beckoning of my mother's that will assuredly be followed with a lecture about arriving in time. I called you twice, Lily. This is a job interview, and you undoubtedly made a bad first impression. Who wants to have the person who's late? Here we go again. My mom can draw a connection between being late for dinner and work ethics. Sorry, mom, I just wanted to finish the, the movie before I ate, I replied. Instantly regretting that coming up with a more acceptable reason to be late for dinner. What I have told you is that prioritizing your time, Lily, bug, mama is not expecting a response. Prioritizing your time, Lilybug, mama is not expecting a response. You can watch a movie in your spare time, but I cook dinner at a specific time to ensure that you have enough time to eat. Do the dishes, take a bath, and get back to bed that you can get up at eight hours of sleep a night. I know, mom, that's why I finished my homework first for the whole week and, and after getting it done, I decided to be, I thought and it would be over before dinner. I added for good measure, hoping that it would appear, I would appreciate I didn't daily around the last minute of my homework as usual. Even though homework only existed on the list of words and their definition, I looked up my study and it was testing all the week long that Langley Middle School, a small detail I was carefully to leave out. That is the day for the Lily, my darling. Okay, so um, thank you. Yes. You uh now, now the, the part that you just read was uh Lily. That was a uh, 
when she didn't go to school? That was after school when mama was trying to make dinner and telling her that it's time for dinner and you and uh, there is no such thing as being late for dinner comparing it to work. You can't be late for dinner and think you're going to get a job. It was she comparing it late for dinner to late for work. Well, that's the day she skipped school because she, she was embarrassed because of uh, the kid was teasing on the bus. And then right. her mother didn't know it. Exactly. Yeah, so um, uh, I tell you, children who are uh, bully really uh, go um, uh, through it. And any other yeah. questions about uh, Harry, you and Trey, was y'all listening to the story? You don't know. Okay. No. Well, I, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, 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 I about she had to eat beans 52 times a week i said poor baby because i feel i i i didn't appreciate i didn't appreciate green beans and peas I until i got grown oh yeah i felt it i felt it too i ate and, and, and my mother at my house, house so uh, you either eat what's there or you get your own well yeah. try to eat them so he been Trey, Trey eats them. Beans. Uh -huh, yeah. cause I've been feeding them to him all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, I I love beans myself. <laughs> well, they say it's I a do. source of protein. Yeah. Well, yeah, Harry, man. I, Harry, do you want to read next? Huh? Yeah. Okay. All about back. Some people may not like that, but bats are great animals. Bats can fly. Their hands are made for flying. They have ten fingers. The skin covers their fingers. They're, they only use them like wings. Bats fly when the sun sets. They fly to find food. Hanging. Bats have five toes. Five toes on each foot. They hang by their toes. Hanging keeps them safe from animals on the ground. Bats hang from tree caves or roofs to sleep like bears. Some bats sleep for most of the winter. Other in other seasons, most bats sleep all day. Sleep all day. Yes, ma'am. Some people think. Do you like bats, Harry? 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 <laughs> he pushed the, he was trying to push the um 
volume back on and he clicked the audio and he, he disappeared. I, I guess he'll click it back on. May I read next? I'm waiting after he, after Harry comes back. Okay. Uh, Some uh -huh. people think that's can't see. They can, but seeing, seeing. Some people think that can't see. They can, but seeing in the dark is hard. They can hear. They use hearing to smalling, smalling to help find their way. Eating. Do bats do bats do their eating at night? Some bats eat frogs, some bats eat flowers. Most bats eat insects. Bats are good at catching insects. They catch insects in their mouth. They, most bats eat insects. Bats are good at catching insects. They catch insects in their mouth and in their wings. Some bats eat fruit. They will, they are called fruit bats. Climbing. Bats do not build nests as birds do. Their babies climbing climb on the sticks to sticks or rocks. Baby bats get around by climbing to their mama, ma mother. Bats help people eating insects. That's why people have bat houses in their yards. Help it. Bats help people by carrying seeds after eating fruit. Bats drop the seeds, the seeds may grow into new fruit trees. But bats can also be harmful. Some bats can get sick. So look, but do not go near them. It is great to watch bats flying in the night sky. The end. Very good. Very uh, good. So if I get a bed house right. in my backyard, <laughs> they'll eat up the uh, mosquitoes? Is that what I heard? Insects. It's a mosquito mm -hmm. insect? Yes, ma'am. I never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, mm -hmm. can you give us a summary of, uh, of the book and then anybody can ask some any questions? That was my biggest observation. <laughs> some people thought they did not like that. 
Some people did not like that. But that, but, but the story says bats are wonderful animals. They have, ten, they have ten fingers, and the skin covers their fingers. Their fingers work like wings. Bats can fly. Bats fly when the sun sets, and and they fly to get food. Let's have five toes on each foot for climbing. Hanging keeps them safe from animals on the ground. Bats hang in trees, hang on trees and caves or roofs. Some people think bats can't see, but it's hard to see in the dark. So they use hearing and smelling to find their way. Some bats eat frogs, some bats eat flowers. Some bats eat fruit, they call them fruit bats. Bats do not build nests like birds. They climb to their mothers. Bats help people by eating insects. So that's why they make pet houses in their backyard. And you say they have 10 fingers? Uh, uh, you mean like. Uh, how, uh, show me a picture of them so. I don't really know where the fingers are, but this is the back. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you way. very much. <laughs> okay. So the next very nice. Next. Yes, I'll read next. Okay. Mary okay. gave us some good uh, interesting facts about bats, and I have seen some humongous bats. Now, I've seen some little bats, but it's like, okay, but I have seen some huge bats. I have and never I seen a bat. On pictures. I have never Man. seen a bat. <laughs> Me either. We'll have to go back and research and find some of those, those, those humongous bats. Not here. They live in other countries or something, but okay. Now, uh, I'm going to read about Jacob Lawrence, and I thought when I looked through this book, all about you, Harry, because Jacob Lawrence is an artist, and aren't you an artist? I want to. <laughs> oh, you're an artist. We saw one of your pictures. So he's he's like you. He started life as a kid, and he used what he had to uh, do what okay. he needed to do. Okay. Do it now. I have paid. Okay. Well, okay. Book was really illustrated by Mike Venezia, and we're going to read, I'm, I'm going to read this probably about three parts. All right, and let's see. Getting to know the world's greatest artist. Jacob Lawrence was born in 1917 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. He loved using art to tell stories. Jacob's paintings often showed important historical events but he liked to paint scenes of everyday life too. Now that's what Harry did. He showed us a picture of himself and his, I think it was himself and his brother. Some of the historical 
stories Jacob Lawrence painted were the exciting adventures of African American heroes. And what was that? Toussaint the over Overture, for example, was a slave on the island of Haiti. And my uh, brother-in-law is, is from Haiti. I hope to go there one day. He managed to organize other slaves into an excellent army who fought their French rulers to win freedom. Harriet Tubman was a slave in the state of Maryland. She escaped from her owners, but risked her life over and over again by returning to the South to help other slaves escape. So these are some scenes that he's done. And you said Jacob Lawrence. Yes, ma'am. Was are he, he part of the Harlem Renaissance? Well, let's see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's a good question. That's why I said let's see. All right. Um, so these are his artwork is hanging in museums. Because there was so much to know about the exciting people Jacob portrayed, he usually painted scenes, lots of scenes for each story. He also would write a few sentences for each painting to help explain what was going on. Now, these paintings in the Detroit Institute of Art, and I have, I used to go as a kid, you know, they had, you, when they had field trips, and I went as an adult. So when I go back again, I'm going to make sure to see if I look for some of his paintings when I go back to Detroit. So like this one, let me see. Uh, oh, this was John, the John Brown series. Jacob got ideas for other paintings watching everyday events in his neighborhood. When Jacob was 13, his family moved to a section of New York called what? Harlem. <laughs> At first, Jacob couldn't believe how crowded the streets were and how tall the buildings seemed. Harlem was a place where African Americans, er, Americans could live without being treated badly as they were in many parts of the U.S. at the time. Even though Harlem was overcrowded and jobs were hard to find, black people felt more comfortable there. So yes, Meredith, he was in Harlem. Okay. Jacob Lawrence lived in Harlem with his mother, younger brother, and sister, Jacob's father had left the family years before. To keep her children out of trouble while she was working, Mrs. Lawrence entered them in a type of daycare center called the Settlement House. And look at all these bright and shiny faces. And it's, it's called the, the chocolate soda bag. This was for refreshment. This was where Jacob first became interested in art. The center had lots of arts and crafts activities. Jacob started working with crayons and poster paints. He got ideas for his first paintings from all the colorful patterns that decorated his family's apartment. So this is, look, this is what he did. And he showed his mom his artwork and she was excited about it. Your mom likes your artwork, Harry? Harry, you show your mom your heart, your artwork? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, she likes it, I know. Okay. All right. So we're going to, oh, next, Jacob started painting street scenes on cardboard boxes. He will cut the box apart and use three sides to get a three-dimensional look. So he would take a box and cut it up so he would have three panels. So maybe that's something you could do, Harry. You could draw three pictures on one cardboard, but they all match together. Okay. And we're going to stop there, and I'll pick back up this afternoon. Well, thank that was you Jacob very, Lawrence. He's an well, Thank you very much for, for that. And I just saw uh, on Google to see what uh, it said, Lawrence parents. Um, Separated when he was seven, and in 1924, his mother moved 
her children first to Philadelphia, then to Harlem. When Jacob was 12 years old, he enrolled in public school, uh, located on 135th and Nimitz uh, Avenue. Uh, do you remember which year the uh, Harlem Renaissance started, uh, Janice? I know that it started with Lex and Hughes' time, uh, and I was trying, I'm just writing a comment about that. I was trying to recall the time period. I, I can't remember the time period, but I do know that it was when Langston, Langston Hughes right. was there in, in uh -huh. with literature. I, and I'm, I'm, tr I'm looking at the, the birth of Lawrence, and I don't know if he was part of the Harlem Renaissance. I'll have to, to Google that to see, do some research on that time period of uh -huh. the Harlem Renaissance. But I know that the Harlem Renaissance was the awakening for so many things for Blacks. Right. And we cherish the legacy, Harlem yeah. Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was an intellectual revolution of arts and literature and of, of poets. And in, uh, in, mm -hmm. in Harlem, and Parker Walker was there, Richard Wright, Zornel um, Hurston. You know, people from the That's south. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. So uh, uh, I, I really I, okay. uh, I looked it up. It said the Harlem Renaissance was an intellectual, social, and artistic explosion centered in Harlem, Manhattan, New York City, and in the 1920s. At the time, it was known as the New Negro <laughs> Movement, named after the New Negro, a 1925 anthology edited by Alan Locke. So we had to look that up. Began approximately 1920, and the dates was 19 about 1918 through the mid 1930s. And what's that? They list several. They list. Was Jacob Lawrence a part of it? They yeah, list several. Right. Um, that period. Okay. I know about yes, it God. says uh, Eric Douglas. Jacob Lawrence, Augusta Savage, I know she was a, a, a sculptor, oh. William Johnson, James Ver was it James Van Der Van Der Zee, Romare Bearden, oh, they have several names. Okay. And I was thinking, uh, art is, art is not just drawing, but people draw, and we, you know, people create. So, like, Trey, he's Creative, Harry is creative. We're all creative. Thank you, Trey. Trey said, I'm creative. We're all creative. We're all artists. We just uh -huh. have we all have different mediums. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a it's a uh, expression. Art is, is an expression mm -hmm. like um even now uh, our rappers uh, uh are able to use their expression. Uh I just saw mm -hmm. a, a rap song that a young man did after George Floyd. And he uh, is expressing oh. how he feels about um, society and, and what needs to change through, through that in form of expression. And poetry is a form of expression and, um, and uh, books. Right. And, and definitely uh, art because uh, when I Googled, they said what he's not, uh, famous for is everything you just mentioned, uh, the art that he's uh, famous for. And it's also in uh, a museum in, in New York, the, the portrayal of uh, Harry Tubman and those other uh, people. So that that was a very good. We have to do some more reading about the Harlem Renaissance. Huh? <laughs> uh, we do. I uh, tried to get some stamps with the Harlem uh, Renaissance on uh, uh, people on there. Uh, Harry, have you ever heard of that? The Harlem yeah. Renaissance? Have you ever heard of the Harlem Renaissance? No, ma'am. So we have to get you out a book about that. We have to find something. Well, very good. You would love his poems. You would love Langston Hughes's poems. Oh my God. You just love them. And Mer Meredith read one the other day. All you have to do is just go to Langston Hughes and then you'll be off and running to the Harlem Renaissance. 
It's just so much. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I I have to give him a mat with that poem on because I I make these um I make these uh mats. This is our uh, lace and huge is um my Angelo one of my poems I wrote this year. And I laminate them oh. and I and I give them um. <laughs> Garbage collectors to give to their um, uh, children, uh, like they have the alphabet, different learning um, materials. So that's uh, that's yeah, cool. that's very nice. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I guess uh, 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 Doctor Neil Vincent, you gonna take us home, huh? And then Larry, I mean, uh, Harris gonna give us our no, I mean Trey gonna give us our closing statement. Okay, I thought about the children and I want to share Michael Wynn's poem so that you, you may know this, but I want to share Michael Wynn, I am the black child. Michael Wynn is the CEO for the Foundation for Ensuring Access and Equity there in Georgia. So his whole idea is to educate the child from childhood on to adulthood in terms of the different things that he has been doing through education. I am the black child. I am the black child. I am special. Ridicule cannot sway me. I am strong. Obstacles cannot stop me. I hold my head high, proudly proclaiming my uniqueness. I hold my pace, continuing forward through adversity. I am proud of my culture and my heritage. I am confident that I can achieve my every goal. I am becoming all that I can be. I am the black child, and I am a child of God. Michael Wynn. Very good. Very what good. Year, what year did he write that? It's been some time ago. I can't remember the, the origin of it, but when I came across it many years ago, I memorized it and it became part of the Daughters of Margaret, uh, the ensemble that I was part of in honor of Dr. Margaret Walker Alexander's performances. So we shared I Am the Black Child to many audiences in and out of the state. And it's, it's such an uplifting poem because it speaks against oppression, discrimination, any kinds of shackles, whether they are mental or physical, to the child to say, no matter where I am, I can become whatever I want to become, no matter what they strive to do to me or do to me, I still can strive to reach my goal because I am special. God made me unique. And uh, it's such an uplifting poem because it says so many things. And it makes me think about poets like Langston Hughes and Maya Angelou, just different ones. Lucille Clifton came along telling us that we are somebody, Haki Mata Bhuti. And so this Black Lives Matter movement, as you know, is, is just an, an off branch of what the different voices have been saying before we came on the scene and since we've been on the scene as children and adults. But now we are in another renaissance of a rude awakening. That's the way I would look at it in terms of Black Lives Matter. A moment to really express pen and paper and uh, vocalics. A moment to, to say 
you can't forget me because I'm the one who held you up and I'm the one who continues to hold you up. I have never been inferior to you. I have never been. That's just some label you put on me because of your own inferiority. Let me ask our Trey and now, Aaron, can you tell us um, something special and unique about yourself? And because how Paul talks about um, a black people being special and unique. And how do you see yourself as special and unique? So I sometimes I might get up to Mr. Pranking and mean jokes, but even though I still help people and I love them too much. Oh, that would be so good. Okay, how do you see yourself as being special and unique? Painting. Uh, like uh, your painting and art. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 today, can you draw a picture to to share with us that depicts something about how you're special and unique, and share it with us on the next call? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and no. Uh, so uh, are there uh, any other comments or questions before we close? Trey, are you ready to take us home? Get your closing statement. Well, so I, found, I found the poem and I think I'm going to print it out for Trey to uh, read one of his one of his affirmations. Oh, very good, very good. Thank you. Okay, Trey, you ready to give us a closing statement? Everybody stay on until, until we close. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you for thank you for joining us today. Please join us. Please join us at two fifteen. How Central. Central time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, very good. good. See you guys at two fifteen. Right, and Harry, right. you are fabulous. <laughs> we have learned so much from you all. Yes, <laughs> yes. very nice, very nice. All right, see y'all. Thank you. All right, we'll see you all. Good afternoon. Okay. Bye. 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 Have a good afternoon. Nice. Sorry, I won't see y'all this afternoon. I see y'all in the morning. Okay, see you in the morning. We'll miss you. All right. Have Bye. A good Bye. 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 Bye.